Welcome to this video discussing 12 lead ECGs for basic life support. Let me take a moment to talk about the significance of a 12 lead ECG in heart attack patients. If your patient is experiencing a myocardial infarction, he or she probably has a clot in the coronary artery. Some of those patients, but not all of them, need to have that coronary artery quickly reopened. That's called immediate reperfusion. So how do you know if your patient needs immediate reperfusion? It turns out that the 12 lead ECG is the test that identifies which patients need immediate reperfusion. Those patients are called STEMI patients because they have ST segment elevation on the 12 lead ECG. If you could obtain a 12 lead ECG and send it on for interpretation, you could get help to some of those STEMI patients and get them identified and treated earlier. That saves heart tissue, that saves lives. This small mobile 12 lead device provides first responders with a critical tool. You can now quickly capture a 12 lead ECG and send that information to care team members who can review the report to determine the most appropriate next steps. In this video, you will see that the device has been designed to help you capture and send a 12 lead quickly and simply. In this video, we will walk through the three main steps. Skin preparation and lead placement, 12 lead acquisition, and then transmission. Since this device depends on a cellular connection to the internet, we'll also talk about what to do if the transmission does not go through. But before we dive into that, a couple of points about the device. When you receive it, it will already be in this protective bag with all of the cables attached. This bag serves to protect it from damage, so the device is not intended to be removed from the bag. Also, we recommend that you keep the 12 lead cable attached to the device so it is ready to go when you need it. Check for cable damage prior to each use. Now let's get started. Before positioning the electrodes, if a significant amount of hair is present over the electrode site, take a moment to use a razor or electric clipper to remove the hair. Once that is done, or if there was no hair, Give the skin a quick, brisk rub with something mildly abrasive. An unsterile 4x4 works well. This helps to remove skin oils and dead cells, allowing the electrode gel to penetrate better, thus reducing artifact. Artifact is the leading cause of unreadable 12 lead ECGs. The 12 lead ECG is obtained from 10 electrodes, four on the limbs, six on the chest. First, we will identify the proper landmarks for electrode placement. Once we've done that, we'll discuss how to find those landmarks. Proper electrode placement is very important. Here's an overview of the chest electrodes in their proper position. The starting point for the chest electrode placement is going to be the fourth intercostal space. So let's describe how to find the fourth intercostal space. One way to find the fourth intercostal is to use the sternal angle as a reference point. The sternal angle is located where the manubrium articulates with the body of the sternum. As the name implies, the two form an angle where they join. This angle can be best seen on the lateral perspective. Because of this sharp angle, the junction is reasonably easy to palpate. To find the angle, locate the suprasternal notch. It's the obvious notch right on top of the manubrium. From there, palpate down approximately two inches until you can feel the sternal angle. From the sternal angle, move laterally to the right. Your finger now is on the second rib. From the second rib, slide your finger down to the second, third, and fourth intercostal space. Once you've found the fourth intercostal space, position the V1 and V2 electrodes in the sternal borders. The next step is to place the V4 electrode. The V4 electrode is positioned mid-clavicular line, fifth intercostal space. The remaining electrodes do not have specific intercostal landmarks, 
they are placed in relation to V1, V2, and V4. The V3 electrode is situated midway between V2 and V4. Do not follow the curvature of the fifth intercostal space for positioning V5 and V6. Instead, the V5 and V6 electrodes are positioned on a horizontal plane with V4. V5 is placed in the anterior axillary line and V6 is placed in the mid axillary line. While the mid axillary line is reasonably easy to find, the anterior axillary line may be more subjective. The anterior axillary line extends down from the anterior axillary fold. The anterior axillary fold is formed by the border of the pectoralis muscle and the deltoid muscle. Another way of describing it is to say the anterior axillary fold is where the arm joins the chest. Despite your best efforts, if you are unable to locate the anterior axillary line, position V5 approximately halfway between V4 and V6. Another way to find the fourth intercostal space goes like this. Once the limb electrodes have been applied, find the clavicle and palpate medially to the first rib. Below the first rib is the first intercostal space. Palpate down to the second, third, and fourth intercostal space. The V1 electrode is positioned in the fourth intercostal space on the right sternal border. V2 is positioned in the fourth intercostal space on the left sternal border. The next electrode to be positioned is V4. V4 is positioned in the midclavicular line in the fifth intercostal space. Now V3 is positioned midway between V2 and V4. The V5 electrode is placed in a horizontal plane with V4 in the anterior axillary line. V6 is positioned on the same horizontal plane in the mid axillary line. When using the method just described, make certain to identify the juncture of the first rib and the sternum. In some cases, a slight space is palpable between the clavicle and the first rib. Also, to learn how to apply electrodes on a female patient, please see the extra content included with this DVD. Just so you know, the cables are the same cables used by both the LifePak 12 and LifePak 15 monitor defibrillators. However, do not pull or stretch patient cables as this may cause damage. Store them by forming a loose loop. The arm electrodes can go anywhere between the shoulder and the wrist. It is probably better to put them closer to the shoulder to reduce artifact. The leg electrodes can go anywhere from the hips to the ankle. Now, depending upon how the patient is dressed, it's often easier to access the area around their ankles. The six chest electrodes are positioned in specific anatomic landmarks, as we've already discussed. V1 goes in the fourth intercostal space, just to the right of the sternum. V2 in the fourth intercostal space, just to the left of the sternum. You skip V3 for a moment, and you go to V4, midclavicular line, fifth intercostal. Now you come back and place V3 halfway in between V2 and V4. Okay, two more left. V5 and V6 are horizontally level with V4. V5 in the anterior axillary line, when your arm joins your chest, and in the mid axillary line, right underneath the armpit. Okay, let's recap. First, remove any hair if present and prep the skin. An unsterile 4x4 works great for this purpose. Position the limb electrodes, find the fourth intercostal space, position the chest electrodes, that's it. You see we're using these white foam electrodes? We chose those for the video because they clearly show the electrode position. The style of electrode does not matter. All of them are positioned in the same exact place as shown here. Once the leads are connected, it is time to turn on the device. Do so by pushing the green power button. The initial screen provides you the leads view. You can use this to see whether or not any of your leads are noisy. If so, you can adjust the noisy lead 
by confirming that the electrode is fully adhered to the skin and the cable is firmly attached to the electrode. Another thing you can see is the leads off message. In this case, check the lead identified for its connection. Once reconnected, look at the ECG to make sure the waveform is visible. To acquire a 12 lead, all you do is push the yellow 12 lead button. The device now allows you to quickly enter the patient information such as name, ID, age, and sex. Do so using the keyboard and the yellow buttons on the right hand side corresponding to the up and down arrows. When complete, push save and then home. When the screen display is done, the 12 lead has been acquired. You can scroll through the leads by pushing the leads button using the corresponding yellow button on the right hand side. You can also view the interpretive statement by pushing the interp button. Oh, just a reminder, do not place defibrillator pads over ECG electrodes. If defibrillation is needed, remove V5 and V6 electrodes before placing the defibrillation pads. Ensure that personnel are not touching the device or cables during defibrillation. Once you have acquired your 12 lead, you can transmit it to predefined sites. These sites correspond to the hospitals that were set up during the implementation process. To transmit, simply push the transmit button labeled XMT. The device automatically selects the default site for transmission. In this case, the default site is named Evergreen. If that is correct, simply push the send button. If it is not, then push site to select another site. For this example, we are just going to use the default site. So all we need to do is push send. Once we do that, the device will transmit the information via its cellular connection to the LifeNet system and then to the hospital that corresponds to the site you selected. Note that on this screen, the device also shows its signal strength. When transmission is successful, you will see a transmission complete message on the screen. You will also hear a single beep tone. This means that your 12 lead has been successfully received by the LifeNet system and is being distributed. Users on the hospital side will be alerted to your 12 lead and can view it. It will look something like this. Once transmission is complete, you'll be asked to push any key and the device will go back to monitoring mode. If you would like to pull up a 12 lead report already acquired during that session, just push the XMT button, followed by RPT. This brings up a listing of all the reports that have been done during the session. Simply select the desired report and select view. Incidentally, if the transmission does not go through, you will hear a three beep tone. Listening for that tone is helpful and allows you to focus on the patient rather than having to keep your eye on the screen. And that's all there is to it. What we just went through is of course an ideal scenario. There may be times when you're trying to transmit a 12 lead and you do not have a cellular signal. If the device cannot transmit, it will automatically retry. This is a setting that could be changed on the device, but the factory default is three retries. If for some reason you're not able to get back to an area of coverage, you might find yourself in a situation where you will need to verbally communicate the interpretive statement. To do so, all you need to do is push the interp button and read off the interpretive statement. Now, say you've transmitted the 12 lead to the hospital but another crew arrives and you want to show them the 12 lead or the interpretive statement, or you wish to retransmit a report. You need to pull up a stored 12 lead report. If you have not turned off the unit, then pull up a 12 lead report 
by using the method we just demonstrated. If you have turned it off, you can pull up a report from the archive. Now here's how you do that. The device stores the 12 lead reports in its archives. You can get to the archives through the options screen. To do so, push the options button, then select number one for archives. You will then be asked for a password. The default password is 0000. Of course, you can change this. This will pull up the archive page, which lists the stored records organized by patient. First, select the patient. The most recent patient is listed first. The device will first ask if you'd like to transmit the report again. If you were just looking to get the interpretive statement, select report. You will then see the available 12 lead reports acquired for that patient. Scroll to the appropriate report and push the view button. The screen now displays the 12 lead ECG. To view the interpretive statement, push the interp button. You would then be able to read off the displayed interpretive statement. Another helpful feature you might want to take advantage of is the test transmission feature to do a daily test. This is easily done through a few steps. Turn the device on. Even with nothing connected to the device, you will see the test button on the right hand side. To perform a test transmission, simply push test. The device will run through a transmission and send a test file. If the device shows transmission complete at the end of that process, then the test was successful. What we just did was send a test transmission to the LifeNet system to ensure that this connection works. If your hospital wants to get a test transmission, you can go into archives and transmit a test file. That's all there is to it. As you can see, this device has been designed to allow you to quickly acquire a 12 lead ECG and send that information to downstream care team members. Please refer to the user manual for additional and more detailed information. Thanks for watching.